So first, I want to talk about 3D printing with SolidWorks itself. If we click on the file tab, we're able to see an option for print 3D. Uh, where we would get to choose from hundreds of different OEMs. Um, so we get a lot of printers to choose from. It'll give us things like the dimensions. So we get to really see what our part will look like on the tray when we print it. And it helps give us a little workflow to saving the part within its proper file format so that we could export it for 3D printing. So let's take a look at what that would look like in a regular workflow. All right, so we have our file inside of SolidWorks. Let's go ahead and click File. We can click print 3D. And over here, you can see we have the ability to choose our printer. Uh, we can go manage favorites and we can select from one of over a hundred different OEMs. And we can also see all the different types of printers they have. So let's just click on Stratasys and we can see all the different uh, printer setups they have for us. So let's just select the, the Stratasys F370. We can see that the build size is actually auto populated which is convenient because that allows us to uh, visualize what our print will look like and whether or not it'll fit inside of the printer when we're ready to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and select the plane that we want to be the bottom. We're actually, we're gonna select this. Notice how it puts it upside down. We want it to be the other way. So we're just gonna change that the direction and then we're gonna offset so that it's actually placed on the bottom of the tray. Now we can go ahead and we can select the orientation so we can change the rotation about the plane and we can also translate the part left, right, up and down on the tray depending on where we want it. And then you can see here we can scale. Um, so it actually gives us our max value as to how big of a part could fit on this tray. So let's just go with something like 1.5 to demonstrate. You can see the part gets larger and you can see how it changes with respect to the build volume. Uh, you can change things like your percent infill, let's just say 40. And now let's head over to preview. And we can see here that we can actually see which faces are supported and which ones aren't. Yellow being those are the unsupported surfaces, green being the color that you would have uh, supports here. You could of course change those colors and do some other customization in here. Um, and we can also select the type of FDM material that we wish to use. Once all that's set, we can go back to our settings and we can click on this save file. And we can select one of those types of files that we mentioned earlier. In this case, I'm going to select STL and we're going to click save. And we'll just save this to our desktop. We'll save it as an STL. And we're done. It'll convert it to an STL. And we're good to go. There are a few other ways that we can prepare files for 3D printing. And one of those ways is with the 3D experience. So this is actually a really cool platform. It allows you to work remotely with your entire team from uh, to Dassault product. It allows us to use our browser to really get access to a community-based uh, SolidWorks design format. We can then easily download those files from our program, uh, manipulate them in SolidWorks on our computer, and then we can import that file, either an STL or a solid part, depending on what file types your printer will accept. And then we can import those files into the right slicing software. And then an additional step for, here, for uh, the 3D experience is we can actually go back to the platform once we're done prototyping, and we can take pictures uh, and update the team live. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the 3D experience, 3D printing workflow looks like. All right, so now that we're inside of our browser, let's go ahead and head over to the 3D experience platform. And we're going to log in. Once we've done that, we're going to head over to our communities tab where I know my team is working. And I'm going to scroll down to the conversation they were having about this part. And we can see here that my three coworkers have been working on this part and they said we're ready to get this uh, ready for prototype. So I'm able to respond back and say, let's get this going. Now that that's done, they were nice enough to send the file over to me. So in my files tab, I can simply come over to here to this download icon and click it. And then I can open up the file inside of my desktop uh, SolidWorks application.
now that this is open, we can see this is a hollow body and that means it's gonna fill up with support when we print it and I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just going to create a center cut so that I can print the half of this model that I wish to print and then I can come back and print the other half later and then reassemble them to, just to save all that model material. So let's go ahead and just save this. Uh, we'll save this right to the desktop as a solid part. We'll click save. Um, now that that's saved, we can go ahead and export this into whatever 3D printing uh, prep software we wish, and then we can go ahead and print it. Now the cool part is once that's done, we can head back over to uh, the 3D Experience platform where we are able to post pictures of the prototype that we were able to print. That way our team remotely can be able to stay intact in contact with the, uh, the project itself. So now that everyone's up to date, the project can move on now that the prototype has been done.